Hello everyone. Welcome to our ArcGIS Pro tutorial. My name is Anastasios and I'm a higher education developer in the Education and Research Group at Esri Canada. In this tutorial, I will demonstrate part two of improved processing and automation that ArcGIS Pro can do. The previous video or the third module explained the fundamental differences between ArcMap and ArcGIS Pro and demonstrated how to clone your own Python environment, combining ArcPy and ArcGIS API for Python, and executing it in Jupyter Notebook, then imp import geoprocessing tools into Model Builder, or saving it as a Python script. If any of these are new to you, please watch the previous video for reference. With this video, I will discuss and demonstrate parallel processing. In Python, there is a limitation called Global Interpreter Lock, or GIL, which never allows us developers to use the multiple cores of the CPU. The reason why it is there is first, Python naturally runs very fast on a single thread. Multiprocessing in Python is usually not effective, often slower than a single core processor, unless your code enacts as a pipeline or generates a lot of input and output, or known as I.O. Second, GIL prevents multiple threads from accessing the same Python structure simultaneously and distributing it randomly. If you bypass GIL and develop code that does not do pipelining or I.O., then you risk into data inconsistency and integrity problems. Therefore, when you are programming, you have to be careful and always test and compare the output with and without multiple processing to ensure. Here is a graphical example of what multi-processing can do in Python by executing a task, which is converting a list of CSV files into individual point shape files. On the left, you have one CPU and it iteratively runs the individual files in a for or while loop and outputs it as an individual point data. On the right, it does the same thing except you're mapping the list of CSV files into separate CPUs. In this case, there are four CPUs, and then it letting it perform its own task. This is parallel processing. Therefore, in theory, executing this task should be four times faster than on a single core. If you had eight cores, it would be eight times faster. There are several packages in Python that allow you to do parallel processing. One of the more common ones is the multiprocessing package, which can be viewed here. In ArcPy, there is the ArcPy.env.ParallelProcess factor, and you can set it to percentage of cores. In ArcGIS Pro, it works across many standard geoprocessing tools. For more information, you can review it at this blog post here. As for using ArcGIS Pro GUI tools, you can use it based on the ones mentioned in the ArcPy table above, except you would have to go to the tools environment and set it up. Here's where you can find this in ArcGIS Pro. So I already have the intersect tool and if you go and what you normally see here is parameters what you have to do is go to the environments and then you go all the way down where it says parallel processing factor. There's an info tab that, that tells you the details of how to how to set it up and you would have to write it in percentage such as like 50% or 100. So let's say you had four cores and you set it to 50%, that means it's going to be using two. If you have if you set it to 66, it will round up. So in this case, it will be 3. And then there's Geoanalytics desktop. It has its own parallel processing framework for analysis via Apache Spark. More specifically, Geoanalytics Desktop is mainly used to process large amounts of data for aggregation, regression, clustering, and detection. For more details, including the difference between Geoanalytics Desktop and Server, you can view it on this page here. With that said, let's proceed to the demo. To get things started, let's go to the start window, go again to ArcGIS, scroll all the way down to the command prompt, 
And then I already have my default Python environment activated, which is prompt detection. So what I'll do next is go to the project folder, change directory, paste it in here, and then activate Jupyter Notebook. So here you see the, the list of folders. I will go to scripts, 3D interpolation, and I'll open all three of these files. Now, if you, re if you recall from the previous video, I have the old one that took over 16 to 17 minutes to process. And then I have the new one, which is the much faster. Yeah, I'll put them side to side so we can compare and see. So here, the, the, so there are some differences. First, I have a module called Fast Process Interpolate, which is a module that I created on my own. Now, in Jupyter Notebook, it, it is a bit fuzzy when it comes to running parallel processing directly, meaning in order for it to work properly, I would have to import a Python script. Please note that these scripts will be available to download so you can try it out yourself. The fast process interpolate script is here and you can see other functions in there. Now there are three other things I would like to note of in, in this script here. First uh, is the arcpy.m.parallelprocessing factor which I set it to 100% meaning using all my cores. The second is a for loop list comprehension, which I've mentioned in the previous video, which is this one here. The equivalent of that in Python 2 is if you write, if you type it out, list, dates, empty list, and then for d in main file dot new time dot unique list dates dot append d. This is okay to write it out, but I prefer the one line script as it is more efficient. The last thing I would like to point out is the main function, which is appropriate to process and initiate the code for parallel processing and imported modules. Pool is a function where you may put the amount of cores to be used. However, I left mine blank, so it will use all of the CPU cores. Start is to initiate the process, the parallel processing, and then map is the function that takes in two arguments, the function you want to process, and then the and one argument. Usually the parameter argument is a list. If you have multiple parameters, check out this documentation for further details on how to set up the code. Once your process is, is complete, you would want to close it with the join function. So let's execute the script and see what happens. Check it out, just under 105 seconds. This is a significantly faster than the previous one, which was over a thousand seconds. Now I didn't publish this on my portal account as I already have it there. Instead, what I will do is add it to ArcGIS Pro, just to ensure that it went properly. And it seemed like it did it correctly. Now let's do a demonstration of GeoAnalytics Desktop. GeoAnalytics Desktop is meant to geoprocess large data sets in a short amount of time. To access the GeoAnalytics desktop, go to Analysis, under Tools, then go to Toolboxes, and then if you go down here you see GeoAnalytics Desktop Tools, and then you have a list of other sub-tools that you can access. Please keep in mind that this toolbox is available starting ArcGIS Pro 2.4. In this demo, I will be using New York City arrest data. The city has been recording it since 2006 and has close to 4.8 million observations, which is a great demonstration. You can download the data set from here. 
Now what I will do is calculate density and, and do hotspots. Since in New York City there are over 300 neighborhoods covering an area of about 760 square kilometers, that means the average neighborhood size is approximately 2.5 square kilometers. This is a bit large and will make the results a bit broad for the bin size. So what I will do is, is set it to half and keep the neighborhood size to 2.5 square kilometers. And here we have, in just under 16 seconds, a density. Next I'll do is a hotspot analysis and apply the same parameters. So in just over 30 seconds, we, are, we did a hotspot analysis, which is really incredibly fast. And that concludes the entire module in improved processing. The next module will go into applied machine learning. Lastly, check out Esri Canada's Higher Education Resource Finder. There you will find additional content including ArcGIS Pro.